Hi, welcome to Danny's Maths Hub. Today we're going to look at how we add and subtract fractions. Now, the key thing and the most important thing you need to remember when adding and subtracting fractions is that your denominator has to be the same. If they are not the same, it cannot be done. So let's take a look at these first two questions. One quarter plus five six. Okay, the denominators are not the same, so we cannot simply add these together. Now, the quickest way and the easiest way to find a common denominator is by multiplying our two current denominators together. So if we do that, 4 times 6, well, 4 times 6 is 24. So we know our common denominator is going to be 24. Now we have to think, what did we have to times this 4 by to get our 24? Well, we times it by this 6, didn't we? If we times the bottom number by 6, we have to times the top number by 6. So this becomes 6 24th. These are what we call equivalent fractions. Then, if we now look at this one, this number, what do we have to times the 6 by to get our 24 here? Well, we had to times it by this 4 here, didn't we? So if we times the bottom number by 4, we've got to times the top number by 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So we now have 6 24ths add 20 24ths, which if we add these together, we get 26 over 24, which can be simplified down to 1 and 2 24ths, which can be simplified down to 1 and 1 12. And it's the same for takeaway. We multiply our, com our denominators together. So here we'd get 24 again. We'd do our 4 times the 5 because we times it by the 6 as well to give us 20. We'd do the 6 times the 1 to give us 6. 20 take away 6 is 14 over 24, which can be simplified down to 7 over 12. So let's try another one. First step is we multiply our denominators together. 8 times 2 is 16. So we know our two denominators in our new sum are both going to be 16. What do we have to times the 8 by to get 16? Well, we times it by this 2, didn't we? So we're also going to times the 5 by it. 5 times 2 is 10. What did we have to times our 2 by to get 16? Well, we times it by this 8, didn't we? So the 8 also has to times the 1 to give us 8. 10 sixteenths plus 8 sixteenths is 18 sixteenths, which is 1 and 2 sixteenths, which can be simplified down to 1 and 1 eighth. So we've got another question. This is a takeaway. So first step, we multiply our denominators together so they're the same. 7 times 11 is 77. So our two new fractions are going to have denominators of 77. What did we have times our 7 by to get 77? Well, we times it by this 11. So this 11 will also times 2, give us 22. What did we have to times our 11 by to get 77? Well, it was times by the 7, wasn't it? So we need to times those together to get 42. Now, our denominator always stays the same. And this time, we're going to have a negative number, which is perfectly fine. We're going to have minus... 20. This can't be simplified, so this is our final answer. Minus 20 over 77. Now, you may recall from the last video, if we're doing a multiplication or division with a whole number, we put a 1 underneath, and it's the same here. We get 7 over 1. So then if we don't complete this, 5 times 1 is 5, 1 times 4 is 4, and 5 times 7 is 35, which gives us 39 over 5. Which, if we simplify that, we actually get 7 and 4 fifths. And because, if you remember from what I said last time, if we wanted to put this in our calculator, we put in 7 and 4 over 5. And this is exactly what we've got here. So if we're actually adding a whole number to a fraction, it ends up just being that whole number with that fraction. Because it's the way we represent it. Okay, 7 and 4 fifths. Well, here, this is saying 4 fifths and 7 which we can rewrite as 7 and 4 fifths. Well, 7 and 4 fifths, we know we can write like this. However, if it's take away, it does become a little bit more tricky, and it's definitely worth putting the 1 underneath. Then we complete as usual. 1 times 4 is 4, so we know both our denominators are going to be 4. Do the 4 times the 6 to give us 24. Do the 1 times the 3 to give us 3. I mean, end up 21 over 4. How many 4s go into 20? 5. Remainder 1. 
This is when it gets a little bit more tricky and this is when the big marks in the GCSE start coming up. Now remember, if we're ever working with mixed numbers, turn them into improper fractions first. Now some people may say, add these two numbers together first. That isn't incorrect. I personally just prefer to make them into improper fractions first. It does mean we involve a few bigger numbers, but by the end I think it makes it a lot easier. So let's turn into an improper fraction. 3 times 4 is 12. Add the 3 is 15 over 4. Add 6 times 2 is 12. Add the 1 is 13 over 2. Then we do as usual. Multiply the denominators to get 8. 2 times 15 is 30. 4 times 13 is 52. 30 add 52 is 82 over 8. Well, how many 8s go in 82? 10, the remainder, 2. 2 over 8 can be simplified down to 1 quarter. So now your try. Please click the link below in the description. It'll take you straight to the question paper. On the question paper, you'll find a direct link to the answer sheet and the answer video. Very well done for taking time to sit down and watch this video. Good luck with the answers.